Hey, y'all. Um, there are a lot of unique challenges when raising support from a Hispanic community. So we're um, three here to talk about that today. Um, some things that come up a lot um, are things like having too few, feeling like we have too few resources, families misunderstanding, or reluctant churches at times. We know God can raise up Hispanic workers through fundraising, um, but I think we'll see maybe even in our own stories that it takes uh, boldness and willingness to um, ask in a variety of ways. So let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, Jessica, would you mind sharing what your family's reaction was when you told them you were going to be fundraising Yeah, for your ministry? So um, <laughs> I think even the concept of me choosing to do ministry <laughs> was yeah. a challenge. Um, I think that well, for starters, I didn't grow up Christian. I grew up Catholic and I didn't come to know Christ until I was 19. Um, now, I'm one of those rare stories where my entire family came to know Christ around the same time that I oh, did. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but I imagine that if the rest of my family was Catholic, like that's even harder, right? But again, like we didn't grow up Christian. Um my parents' relationship with the church in the beginning was pretty difficult. Um, and that's kind of a separate story, right? Uh, but anyways, um, the concept of me choosing to do ministry plus fundraising was pretty difficult for them to accept and be okay with. Now, they weren't necessarily rude about it or telling me I shouldn't do it. It was just pretty shocking for them. And they definitely asked me to think it through and pray it through uh, probably longer than uh, I should have. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was difficult just helping them understand that I was pretty certain that this is what the Lord was calling me to do. Um, and that as much like I was honest with them, you know, telling them that I was intimidated, you know, mm. going into a fundraising position. But at the same time, I was pretty assured and confident that God would provide that those funds because I knew he was calling me to do this, right? And so being honest with them about those insecurities while at the same time reassuring them of God's sovereignty and, um, you know, him being a provider, um, I think was helpful for them. But nonetheless, it was difficult. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's actually really relatable to my parents um, and mine's situation. Like, I think my parents were really supportive and they're both believers. But there was this sense of like, OK, I obviously didn't know exactly what I was getting into with support <laughs> raising as, when I was starting off. And they didn't know what I was getting into because they had never really seen one, like what a full time campus minister like does. Yeah. And um, like the process of, of support raising for that. So I think for, for us, it was really like this thing of, well, I guess we'll be here to catch you when you fail because family supports each other. Mm, yeah. And that wasn't like bad, but it definitely there was like some tension to get started there. Yeah. But yeah. I know your situation was kind of different. right? Yeah. Here. My situation is very different because my mom, she is a believer. My dad, he's not yet i'm afraid we're praying for yeah. him uh but when i told my mom about first of all like getting into ministry as a campus missionary and then like doing support raising she was very sad like mm. her reaction was like but you came i mean you went to the states to study a second degree yeah and you're gonna ask for money like is that a thing? <laughs> so I had to explain yeah. her first, right? Because of course, like, and I didn't know this at the beginning. So I had to explain, I had, I had to explain her uh, what is support raising and what does the Bible say about support raising. And then, I mean, just because of the grace of God, she understood. And she's one of the, of my main, she, she was my first mm. uh, support partner. Mm. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, and, and I, I think like this is such an important question to talk about when we're looking at fundraising from a Hispanic uh, culture experience because family and like the idea of disappointing who we consider our closest family mm. like takes such a toll, I yeah. think, on us like um, working in, in ministry with other people. Um, I've, I've seen like really hard situations where 
Um, like there were family members that completely disapproved and just really thought, um, that being in ministry or this idea of support raising was like a completely bad idea. And that just really like, um, kind of shatter this person who was trying to get started support raising like confidence and stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. such an important thing to like, I think, um, I, I guess, I don't know, have some empathy in mm -hmm. <laughs> that, like how, what our family thinks is yeah. going to affect how we get started and how we maintain and support raising. Um, Can I, I kind of add to that a little? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I think that part of what made the process easier for my parents was me keeping them updated <laughs> as nice. I was going through the process, you know. Um, because they were pretty anxious about it and they were just kind of like, how are people going to give money to you? You know, like that's yeah. not, it's like from their background, like that's not a thing, yeah, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. And so, um, so keeping them kind of updated of like, Hey, like I had these many conversations today, guess what? I'm halfway in my goal or whatever. Like, I think that was helpful for them <laughs> and obviously encouraging for me because it was reminders like, oh, I'm halfway there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and <laughs> so being intentional and, and keeping them involved in the process yeah. was was imp was important for um, for both of us, our sakes, but mainly for their sake, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. So not that's so cool. I think even for like maintaining partnership. I have a friend who like when it's time for her to mail out newsletters or, you know, bake a, a little bag of cookies to give to her partner. It's like she involves her abuelita in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they like they bake together and her cousins are like sealing the envelopes and addressing them. And and really, I think also like what a great part of like vision casting even to your yeah. family of, of the idea of partnership, not mm -hmm. asking for money. Which, yeah. 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 To invite like your family into a ministry into this process of support raising. Now, I mean, I can see my mom like asking other people <laughs> to support me. So it's awesome. like, oh, wow. First, you were like very skeptical about this. And then like you are helping me to get new partners. Yeah. So it's like God is working not just in my life, but in her life. Yeah. yeah. Well. What a great way to build your network of supporters. Like get your mom involved. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and speaking of network, like what, um, what are some barriers or even situations you came across when it came to missionary partner development, um, within a church community? Mm -hmm. hmm. I honestly, um, didn't ask a lot of churches like Hispanic churches to support me. The few that I did were skeptical and were, um not used to giving i guess <laughs> and so most of my supporters are individuals and i think um you know recognizing that within the hispanic church like giving is not as common as with anglo churches yeah, yeah. um that's, that's just a reality that we have to understand it doesn't mean that we shouldn't challenge and we shouldn't initiate conversations but for me, doing individual partnerships was a lot more successful than approaching a whole church, you know? So, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Makes sense. I think for me, um, well, just like traveling to Mexico again and to ask for, uh, um, for economic support to my church in Mexico was a huge challenge because like as well, they are not... Um, used to give money or like to support others or just like to send missionaries actually I'm the first missionary sent like by my church wow. and yeah this is because of God but also like <laughs> uh, uh, to explain them that this is part of the great commission yeah and like to to send missionaries like a lot of the time is also to other countries yes but also like maybe in the local um like areas where you are living in my in my example is like san antonio yeah. so like to to talk to them to that church and explain them like everything about my ministry but also about like what the bible says about support raising yeah mm -hmm. no that's so good i think um you're talking about like really keeping the great commission like in front of you because i think something that i really bought into um from I grew up in Mexico, in central Mexico, and in a really um, more lower socioeconomic like 
context or state of the country. And so I remember like just kind of this idea in the church always being, well, we we need to like keep resources because like we only kind of have enough to go around here mm-hmm. and, and, and the rest will come later. Mm-hmm. So I think like beginning into support raising, I didn't know how much of that really played into um, – me going and asking people. So in San Antonio, which is also where I do ministry now, um, I found like a really, I think, good mixture of churches that were already looking like outside, um, but an opportunity to challenge myself and those churches to think, well, what if we look beyond kind of like our own doors, even like our own neighborhood? Yeah. Um, and really what we were challenging to think about was the college students in their city um, and how that affects like the nations too. And And how God like will provide from there too. Um, Yeah. And I think um, we mentioned this in a different conversation, the idea that even my individual partners, like they were giving really small gifts. (laughs) Hmm. Um, And I think part of me, again, like was frustrated about that and was um, impatient about that while at the same time recognizing, hey, they chose to give, right? Like they're coming That's from good. a place where like celebrated. Yeah, mm-hmm. like celebrating those little gifts like yeah. was major for me and like shifting my mindset and saying like, hey, if it's just ten dollars a month. That's that, huge. Yeah, like it's it's a beginning, mm-hmm. right? And so um I think for me the the challenge was like being bold enough, like as as time went on to kind of ask for increases. Um, because I was like I don't want to offend them right like I don't want to make them feel that their ten dollars or twenty dollars a month is not appreciated or it's not enough but I also and that this is how I presented it to them like I do want to challenge you in growing in your giving Mm -hmm. like you already made a huge step in starting to give to someone to me into this ministry but I do want to challenge you to continue to give sacrificially right yeah um and so that was at the time intimidating <laughs> to <laughs> mm-hmm. to kind of like ask for those increases but um but I'm really glad that I did and I got I I've gotten to see people grow tremendously mm. in their giving because of that like when they first started giving $20 like now it's double or more you know yeah, and so yeah. um so I think even though it is a barrier it is also an opportunity to to help people grow in their own spiritual mm-hmm. walk. So yeah. that's good. That's good. And you're kind of talking about like um, really challenging people and in, in asking. So mm-hmm. do y'all have any, or maybe we could share about like some insight about what does it look like to make the ask for partnership um, in the Hispanic context? Like, getting you've kind of shared some things about this before. Yeah. With you. Um, first of all, it's not going to take like a 20 minutes call. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> like, for example, this uh, last Saturday, I had dinner with a, with a couple and it took me like two hours. So just in, oh, out. yeah, just <laughs> hanging out because like, it's not, I care about your money or like how much you can give, but it's like, I care about you guys, you as a couple yeah. and you as children of God. Right. So, I mean, support raising, it has to be with relationships. Right. So yeah, it's going to take time for our Hispanic um, culture. Uh, and like be realistic like yeah you are not gonna be able to have five or six support appointments in a day no, uh, no. sometimes it's just one mm-hmm. and yeah yeah you'd also like shared with me a little bit about this idea of maybe a little bit more of an indirect versus direct ask sometimes depending on like also maybe the kind of relationship you have with people yeah you share about that? uh what do you mean with like like, I think sometimes um, what comes off as really, I remember in training, like intimidating is this idea of like, you're going to sit with people and you're going to ask like for this specific amount. And oh, I, yeah. I have found like that's, there's a lot of obedience like to God in that, especially when God is like really specifically telling you to ask something specific. But I also think um, maybe sometimes in Hispanic culture, there is something to say for making a little bit more of an indirect ask mm. sometimes. Yeah, I don't think I ever ask for a exact amount yeah. from my Hispanic supporters, like okay. ever. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, if you are willing to give, think about it, pray about it, okay. get back to me. Um, so I never 
did that because I'm I grew up in Mexico like I I would feel uncomfortable if someone yes. asked me like will you be giving a hundred dollars a month like I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's some. I guess there's something about it that it sounds very aggressive to yeah. us. Like I think is a yeah. way to describe I it. I think yeah. um, I feel like I do not ask for a specific amount. It's just like okay, pray about it. And sometimes they ask me, okay, what are the options? So yeah. then I have the opportunity to tell them. Well, some people they help me with this or this um, quantity, quantity, um, but like or this amount, uh, but like. In or context is kind of rude to mm -hmm. ask for a specific amount, yeah. and like some people, they do not understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's really good. I think uh, that's a great example of like um, having like prepared. Sometimes even in like what you're showing them, illustrating the different ways people already have given, mm -hmm. um, and that's a way to like kind of challenge, you know, like maybe what they would have thought of to start with. Um, yeah. but also like kind of preserve that relationship and those cultural norms in a sense yeah. of respect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so to kind of like land the plane a little bit in our conversation, is there any advice we can share with maybe other Hispanic workers who, um, are praying about whatever ministry they're going to hop on and what it would look like to trust God with their finances and support raising? I think um, for me, I, I, I think I share a little bit this about this with y'all in other conversation. Uh, but it's like, yes, we are from a Hispanic community or a culture. But at the end, uh, the Bible is the same in every, what God says is the same in every culture. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a Hispanic person asking for this is God asking, right? And yeah, it's gonna change the method, but like the message or like the asking is gonna be the same. So yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's well said. I think, I don't know if I would say that this matter in terms of culture. I think people in general love being loved. You know what I'm saying? And like love yeah. feeling this idea of being cared for. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think the the concept of really caring for your supporters yeah. <laughs> and and spending being willing to spend those two hours plus with them, <laughs> yeah. you know, That's besides really cool. the initial ask and, um, you know, just keeping in touch with them. All of that, I think it's it's crucial in and maintaining the relationships and maintaining the support. Um, because if in the Hispanic context specifically, like if we just make that initial ask and all they hear from us is a newsletter, yeah, like that's probably not going to be taken well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. we need to be extra intentional in like visiting in in calling and having that like face to face time with people. That's really cool. Um, and being genuine like with them I th um, again that applies to everyone but I yeah. think in our culture is really important yes. like be genuine so with good. people uh -huh. like show them that you care about their family that you are praying for them like all these different things are huge, yeah so. yeah that's really good when I when I first moved to Texas one of my friends in Mexico was really encouraging me to think that way because I actually when I first came to Texas lived in a in a non Hispanic majority culture or context and it was very different and he would say well you know bring that calor mexicano like yeah <laughs> be your latina caring mm. self and with everybody and I think that's yeah. so true and in support raising really uh, that partnership so yeah thanks, I want to I want to add something to this last question um I remember someone told me of, or gave me this advice always have a story to mm, tell that's good. yeah and that's part of being transparent and that's part of being um honest with people yeah because they are gonna support to these kind of stories in yeah. in our lives in our students lives yeah so yeah that's really good have a story ready um well i'm sure there's a lot of other things we could talk about but um definitely like just the last encouragement to everybody knowing whether you're coming from a minority background or you're just new to support raising like you're not the first person to do this. And so mm -hmm. God's like done it over and over again, being faithful. 
Mm -hmm. um, so he can do it again with you. So thank you.